Hello everyone. Okay, so in this video, we are learning about the cosine rule. So in the last video I made there, we were talking about the sine rule. And now in this video, we are learning about the cosine rule. So the cosine rule is another rule that you learn in Leaving Cert level um, in both ordinary and higher level. But in higher level, you would be asked to prove this rule. So keep that in mind while watching this. So the cosine rule is a rule that we use on non right angle triangles. So let's have a looky here. So the cosine rule simply states, right? So A equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. So what does that mean, right? So this side here, A, right? So A squared is going to be equal to, or one side squared is going to be equal to the sum of the other two sides minus two, two times the other sides together times the cosine of angle A, or i.e. the angle opposite the side on the left hand side of our equation right so this is in your log table so don't be stressing too much if you can't remember it but um so that's it so it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a anyway it's enough to tell me it's enough to tell me how to do it let's do some questions so in the given triangle find the length a b well I have two sides and I have the angle that's trapped between them. So I'm able to calculate this angle, the side of the missing side. So the length of the missing side. So I'm going to call this A. This is going to be B. This is going to be C then. And then this is going to be my angle A. So it's important from using the cosine rule is we have to label our little a, our low, lowercase, lowercase a, and our angle a. So once we have them, that's going to be our reference to what we call everything else. So I have here, so a squared is equal b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. So a squared is equal to x squared, which is equal to 6 squared plus a squared minus 2 times 6 times 8 cosine 40. So if you put the right hand side in your calculator, you're going to get something. I don't know yet, but I'll tell you now in two seconds. Two times. Do you think I would do these questions out before? But no, we're doing it live. We're doing it live, ladies and gentlemen. So two times six times eight times cos 40, cosine 40. So x squared is equal to 26.4597. Da, 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 da. Got square root both sides, and I'm going to get x is equal to 5.144. And there's acid around, no, it doesn't, so there you go. x is equal to 5.144, and that's how we use the cosine rule there. So let's have a look here. Now, this time we're finding an angle. So, when we're trying to find an angle in a cosine rule, all we need are three sides of a triangle. So, if I have an angle, if I, ha if I have a triangle and I have all three sides, I can technically calculate any angle in that triangle without technically knowing um, any other information about it. So, so um, this is going to be the angle I'm looking for. So the angle I'm looking for, I'm going to call that the capital A within my equation up here. So since that is the capital A, this is going to be the little a. And since that's a little a, this is going to be b and c. And it doesn't really matter which one we label b and c. So remember, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. So 7 squared is equal to 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 5 times 8 cosine a. So... I am going to get here, 49 is equal to 64 plus 25 minus 80 cosine 40. 
So, so I'm gonna bring all my numbers to the left hand side. Come on, get co side cosine forty. That was the last question. I'm such a goose. Cosine a. I should say we don't know what a is. Right. So bring everything over to the left hand side. So I have. So 49 minus 64, I'm going to bring the 64 over and bring the 25 over to so the changing signs. Minus 64 minus 25. So I have minus 40 is equal to minus 80 cosine A. So I want to get cosine A on its own. So I divide both sides by minus 80. So I'm going to have one half is equal to cosine A. A is going to equal to cosine inverse of a half. So cosine inverse of one half is going to be equal to, I think, 60. 60 degrees. So A is equal to 60 degrees. So therefore, I found missing sides and a missing angle in a triangle using my cosine rule. So just to remember, a little tip. A little tip and trick. So to use the cosine rule, you need the lengths of two sides and the angle between these sides are known, or the lengths of all three sides are known. So if I have two sides and the angle that's trapped between them, I can use cosine rule. And if I have all the lengths of my triangles, I can use cosine rule as well, as opposed to the sine rule, where I need two angles and one side given that the side given is opposite one of the angles or two sides and one angle right and it's the ang and the angle is opposite to one of the sides given so we're going to do some now um exam paper questions that go over cosine and sine rule and a load of trig um formula we did in previous videos such as our area formula so ABC is an isosceles triangle with length AB, AC is equal to 9. Find the measure of angle BAC given the length of ABC is 21.7. So, first of all, we have to read our question because does this diagram give us all of our information? It doesn't because it says up here, the length AB is equal to AC, which is equal to 9. So, do you have a label that two sides are equal to each other? Bro, that's going to be 9 centimetres. That's going to be 9 centimetres. So now what do we notice about this triangle? Well, two sides are equal. So therefore, it's an isosceles triangle. And since it's an isosceles triangle, therefore, this angle here is going to be this, this angle, 21.7. So now find the angle of ABC. So, um, oh, sorry, find the angle of BCA. So BCA, B. Oh, sorry, BAC, B, A, C. Looking for this one, right? B, A, C. So it's usually like the middle letter, right? The middle vertex where um, the angle lies. So what do I know about triangles? All angles add up to 180. So all angles add to 180. So I have 180 is equal to 21.7 plus 21.7 plus x which is my angle bac so i'm going to guess x is equal to x is going to be equal to so it's length angle bac which is going to be 136.6 degrees 136.6 degrees and there you go that's my answer there so let me just fill it in my diagram so I remember, so 136.6, perfect, right. Next question, hence calculate the area of the triangle ABC. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So area, well, I don't have the perpendicular height here, so I'm gonna be using my area formula, ladies and gentlemen. So recall, how does one spell recall? There you go. Area is equal to a half A B sine C. So what's that mean? It's just I need two sides and then the angle that is between them. So if you look here, do I have two sides and angle that's trapped between them? Yes, I do. So I have the nines here and I have the 136.6. So I have this information so I can use my 
an area formula. So I have area is going to equal to a half times nine times nine. Let me just make this a bit bigger so we see it. Times nine sine of 136.6. So put that in the calculator. So I'm going to get my area is equal to 27.827 centimeters square. It says to round to two. So it's going to be 27.83 centimeters squared. And that is the area of that triangle. There. Right, next question here. Um, a vertical mass PQ is supported by two straight cables, P, S, and P, or R, as shown. The cables are joined to level ground at S and R. So show that P, or is equal to 27 meters, correct to the nearest meter. So P, or, so we need to calculate this length, P, or. So this length here. So what am I using? Well, let's isolate the triangle that P, or is in. I'm going to use this right angle triangle here. And what do I have? Well, I have my adjacent side here. I have my adjacent of this triangle. And I'm looking for my hypotenuse. And I have an angle. And it's a right angle triangle. So I don't need to use any of my fancy smancy formula. I can just use one of my trig ratios. So I'm going to have... Uh, bing, 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 bing. So I have my adjacent my hypotenuse, so I'm going to be using cosine. So remember, cosine A is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be cosine 50 is going to be equal to uh, 174 all over X. So just recall here. So I can write cos 50 as cos 50 over 1, because remember, any number over 1, that's how we write a number as a fraction. I have two fractions equal to each other. I can just flip them upside down. So 1 over cos 50 is equal to x over 17.4. So now I have x divided by 17.4 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to multiply both hand sides by 17.4. They're going to cancel out. So I'm going to have x going to be equal to 17.4 all over cosine 50 which is a number 17.4 divided by cosine 50 we're going to get x is equal to 27.069 and it says correct to the nearest meter so Showed up here is 27 meters, correct to the nearest meter. There you go. Bada boom, bada bing. I have just proven that P or is 27 meters. So you could have done it like that. Or you could have just shown that cosine 50 is equal to 17.4 divided by 27. But you won't get the exact answer like you would if you didn't do it this way. Right, find PS correct to the nearest meter. So PS, so we are looking for this side now. PS my triangle here. Let me rub this out for a second. I don't need this anymore. So I'm looking for this side. Now, I have this side. That side's 27. So I need PS. Well... Let's isolate this triangle now. So I have a scalene triangle here. So what sides do I have? Well, I have that this side is equal to 27. P, P or is 27. And what I also know here is, since this is 50 degrees, therefore this is going to be 130 degrees because it lies on a straight line. So therefore they must add up to 180. So, I have a, and I have this side here, 15. So now, let's have a look. I have two sides, and the angle is trapped between them. So I have 27, 
15, and the angle that's trapped between them. And I'm looking for this side. So I'm going to be using my cosine rule. I'm going to be using my cosine rule, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'm going to be using my cosine rule. So let me just redraw this triangle down here just to save us scrolling back up. So I was 130. This is 27. So that's P. That's R. That's S. And this is 15. I find this. So cosine rule. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared is minus 2BC cosine A. So, um, label our side. So this is my angle, so that's gonna be my capital A, and therefore this is gonna be my little A, because it's opposite. And then the other side of B and C, doesn't really matter which is which. So, X squared is equal to 27 squared plus 15 squared minus two times 27 times 15 cosine 130 Whew. right what's my left hand side going to equal to i think it's going to be a very big number ladies and gentlemen right plus 15 squared minus 2 times 2 7 times 15 times cos 30 put it on your calculator ladies and gentlemen always have your calculator handy right we're going to get x squared is equal to 252.5194 square root both sides to get x on its own Going to get x is equal to 15.89 and it says around to the nearest meter. So x, which is ps, is going to be equal to 16 meters rounded up. And that is our solution to that question using the cosine rule. So this is how trigonometry questions will come up um, primarily in ordinary level anyway. You'd be asked to solve 2D problems and then you're never going to be asked a question just to apply a cosine rule. You're going to be asked um, to apply multiple rules that you've learned through trig as well. All right, so this one comes from the 2017 Ordinary Level paper. So, okay, you know what? See what I did there? I saw a big fat line. Because here, we're just asked to use the formula. So find the distance x in the diagram below, not the scale. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So we need to find the distance x. We need to find this, right? And yeah, correct to some places. Now, I'm using my cosine rule or my sine rule. Huh. Well, I have two angles and a side. So, ding, 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 ding. Probably using my sine rule because that's one of the rules, that's one of the properties we stated above there. But I don't have the angle opposite x. So I can't use my sine rule. But I do have the other two angles. So I can use my property of all angles add up to 180. So therefore, I'm gonna have 180, it's gonna be equal to 65 plus 63 plus theta, wherever this angle is. So I'm gonna get 180 minus 65 minus 63. I'm gonna get x is equal to 50, or sorry, the theta is equal to 52. Now I can use my sine rule. Now I can use my sine rule. So remember, it's the side divided by the sine of the opposite side is the same for every side here. So remember A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. So I'm gonna label this A, this is gonna be my big A, B, big B. So X all over sine 52 is equal to 10 divided by sine 63. I wanna get X on its own, so multiply both sides by sine 52. And I'm going to get x is equal to sine 53 multiplied by sine 52. 8.844. And it says to round two decimal places. So it's just going to be 8.84 meters, centimeters. Perfect, so we have to use the sine rule for this question here. All right, next question. Find the distance y in the diagram below, not the scale. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. So, now let's look at this one. Well, I have two sides. And I have the angle trapped between them. 
and I'm trying to find the side here. So I'm going to use my cosine rule because I have two sides and the angle is trapped between. So this is going to be my angle A. Therefore, Y is going to be my side Y in my formula. And then this is going to be B and C. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. So I'm going to have Y squared is equal to 8.5 all to be squared plus 10.2 all to be squared minus 2 times 8.5 times 10.2 cosine 53.8. So put the right hand side in a calculator. We're going to get 8.5 squared plus 10.2 squared minus 2 times 8.5 times 10.2 cosine 53.8. So I'm going to get y squared is equal to 73.878977. Square root both sides. I'm going to get y is equal to, so square both sides, ding, ding, 8.595, and it says round to two decimal places, so it's going to be 8.6 centimeters. Okay, so next question here, so that question asks us to use our sine and cosine rule, and again, 2016 here, Look, to find the area of this triangle, so it's asked us to use our area formula here. So, area equals a half a b sine c. So I have two sides and the angle is trapped between them. So the area is going to be equal to a half times 8 times 12 sine 30 which is going to be, I believe, the area is going to be 24 centimetres squared. Right, let me just double check this. Ding, yep, yeah. gorge. Right, next part. A triangle has sides 3, 5 and 7. Find the sides of the largest angle in the triangle. Well, so let's just draw a sketch out. So bing, bong, bing. So let's just say seven, three, five. Right, it doesn't really matter what orientation you put them in. But it says here, find the size of the largest angle. So note, yeah, biggest angle is opposite largest side. So, we're going to look at this angle here because 7 is my largest side. So we're looking for that angle. Well, what rule are we using? Again, if you go back up to your rules of sine and cosine, well, cosine rule, I just I, I need I two sides and the angle is trapped between. Or I need all three sides of my triangle. And that's what I have. 3, 5, 7. I have all three sides. So I'm looking for this angle here. So I'm going to call that A as according to our equation. Therefore, this is going to be little a, b, c. So I'm going to have 7 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 3 times 5 cosine theta. So 49 is equal to 9 plus 25 minus 30 cosine theta. So on my left hand side, bring this 9 over and I bring this 25 over, make them a minus. Minus. I'm going to have 15 minus. No, just 15. Fifteen is equal to minus thirty cosine theta. So then divide both sides by minus thirty. So I'm going to get minus a half is equal to cosine theta. 
So cosine inverse minus 0.5. I'm going to get theta is equal to 120 degrees. Right? And that's it for this video, right? So we've covered cosine rule and then we looked at some exam questions that ask us our three formula, area, sine, and cosine. So yeah, hope it was some help and I'll catch you later. Bye.